While in production on my fourth documentary, The God Cells, I traveled to M-Cell in Kyiv, Ukraine, where fetal stem cells got their start over 20 years ago. While undergoing M-Cell's three-day longevity anti-aging program, M-Cell allowed me to document my entire treatment program and film their laboratories and facilities. This is my M-Cell experience. Unlike most medical clinics in the United States, M-Cell tested my blood and urine in their lab on site. It is from these lab results, in addition to a full ultrasound and electrocardiogram, that M-Cell's doctors designed a special protocol just for me, which consisted of a variety of fetal stem cell types, a three-day facial using fetal stem cells, hyperbaric oxygen sessions, and even massage to help keep my circulatory system flowing nicely to allow the stem cell transplants to properly take hold. So on day one, after all my preliminary testing was complete, I was moved to a private room where I enjoyed some coffee and an all organic breakfast I ordered from the menu while I waited for my primary physician to arrive. This is Dr. Irina who is both a medical doctor and a PhD working regularly behind the scenes in expanding M-Cell's research and development of fetal stem cell technology. This is Lena, one of M-Cell's managers and the translator assigned to me. At the start of each day, Dr. Irina checked all my vital signs and asked me various questions related to my overall health. After my physical exam, Dr. Irina carefully explained my entire fetal stem cell treatment program, which was an incredibly complex array of a variety of fetal stem cell types that were harvested between 7 to 12 weeks of gestation and scheduled across a three-day period to seek a variety of goals to improve my overall health. The combination of fetal stem cells given to me on day one helps to create new capillaries and other small vessels across all of my organs, which help to deliver more oxygen and nutrition throughout my body, thus improving overall functions in my organ tissues. These cells also have very positive effects on the inner wall of big blood vessels, therefore protecting my vessels from atherosclerosis. And if there is any current atherosclerosis, it prevents it from progressing. They have a very positive effect on the liver, blood formation, bone marrow, immune, and hormonal systems, essentially giving my entire immune system a full reboot. They started first with a standard sodium chloride saline drip to open up my veins, followed by some anti-allergy meds just to be on the safe side. And after all of this settled in, they brought in my first round of fetal stem cells. Then it was off to see their masseuse, Yuri. The massage was about an hour, and frankly, the best massage I've ever had back to my room for a little lunch and relaxation, followed by hyperbaric oxygen. I had never been in a hyperbaric oxygen chamber before. It feels sort of like flying in an airplane, only with perfect high density oxygenated air quality. Are you? I'm doing fantastic, thank you. Thank you. Hyperbaric oxygen sessions are healthy anyway, but in this case, it serves as further nutrition for the fetal stem cells. And then I was off to the cosmetologist for the first day of my facial. My cosmetologist was Helena, who first gave my face a thorough cleaning before applying the key ingredient of this cosmetic therapy, chorion cells, which Helena had already prepared shortly before my facial began. Chorion cells are early fetal membrane cells that are rich in high-density nutrition, vitamins, and minerals. These cells are highly anti-inflammatory and regenerative when applied to the skin. And M-Cell is the only place in the world offering chorion cells as part of a cosmetic facial. The chorion cells were then carefully brushed onto my face. Helena then applied a rejuvenation mask containing aloe vera and other ingredients to end the session. 
And this was the end of my first day of treatment. I found MCEL's staff to be most kind and professional, and they also provided transportation to and from the clinic each day. At the end of day one, I really wanted to do some sightseeing in the beautiful city of Kyiv, but MCEL's doctors requested that I take it easy and not exert myself too much. I stayed downtown near the central square of Kyiv, which provided a plethora of hotels, shopping, and food. Day 2 Dr. Irina checked my vitals, and I was given a second round of the same fetal stem cells I received on day one. Off to massage. And then round two of hyperbaric oxygen. This is Dr. Maria, who was supervising my sessions. Not only is Dr. Maria a medical doctor, she received her PhD in fetal stem cell therapy. Back to my room, where Dr. Irina inspected my abdomen to prepare me for my first subcutaneous injections of the cells that will improve my neuronal or nervous system. These cells improve all processes regulated by my nervous system, improving all interneuronal connections, improving motor skills, as well as my autonomic nervous system, like heart rate, digestion, respiratory rate, and pupillary response, while also improving memory, concentration, sleep, and overall cognition, essentially giving my entire nervous system a healthy reboot. After a standard saline drip was completed, this combination of cells were injected subcutaneously into the fat of my abdomen. The reason for the location of these injections is because the fat of our bodies hold the most stable temperature and allow overall protection of these cells as they adjust to my body and begin to slowly release into my nervous system. And finally, day two of my facial. Helena started first by placing steam on my face to open up the pores, followed by applying more chorion cells, after allowing the chorion concentration to be absorbed by my skin, Helena prepared an alginate mask at a very cold temperature to then close my pores, sealing the chorion cells inside and further stimulating micro blood circulation. Alginate masks contain seaweeds, which stimulate collagen synthesis, improving the skin's capacity to hold the chorion cells and supply my skin with essential minerals and micro elements but they took this technique to the next level and introduced an electric impulse wand. And lastly, a little rejuvenation cream to end the session. And that was it for day two. Wow. Well, at least at MCEL, as I decided it was time to do a little sightseeing. The city of Kyiv is gorgeous and rich with history and culture. During my journey, I met an American from Pennsylvania who is in love with Kyiv as much as me. Now 12 weeks here over the last year, and this is one of the most wonderful city I've ever been in. Mr. DeMarco is also an M cell patient. 18 years ago, I had a very bad motorcycle accident, and along with many other injuries, I suffered a uh, broken vertebrae, uh, spinal cord damage, and my brachial plexus nerve group was evulsed or torn out on my right side. Those nerves control my right lung, my scapula, right arm. After multiple reconstructive surgeries, I was left with severe spinal cord nerve damage pain. I was prescribed morphine, mexeltine, neurotin, um, many different narcotics. Uh, unfortunately, none of them worked. They would somewhat lessen the pain for short periods of time, but nothing would stop it. I became addicted to the morphine after two years. Uh, I was taking over 200 milligrams of morphine a day. Let me describe the pain. The pain, there was two types of pain. It was a 24-7 type of compression, squeezing pain, which was more bearable 
than the shooting pains that I experienced. Uh, the shooting pains I could liken to uh, a knitting needle that was heated over a flame and plugged into a wall and then stuck in your funny bone. And they would stick it in there for about 30 seconds and pull it out. And then stick it in there for 30 seconds and then pull it out. Uh, jump ahead to a year and a half ago, I was here in Kiev on some personal business and found out about uh, the stem cell clinic M-Cell. There were no promises given to me. Uh, just that in the past it had helped people in my situation. I was advised to wait uh, two or three months before I started tapering off the medication that I was on that was lessening the frequency of the episodes. And I have not had one pain episode since the end of December. First time in 18 years. I am totally pain free and medication free. Dr. Irina checked my vitals as usual. And then time for my second round of subcutaneous injections. But this round of subcutaneous injections was an array of fetal stem cells to help me with my entire musculoskeletal system, which helps to improve my bones, cartilage, tendons, ligaments, and my joints and all their connective tissues improving overall metabolic processes, while also increasing trophic and elasticity of my skin. Also increasing energy levels, triggering regeneration, rejuvenation, and overall high efficiency. Which also, by the way, includes a great improvement of sexual functions. Essentially, giving my entire metabolic system a nice reboot. The reasons for the location of these injections is the same for the cells I received on day two, my third massage, and then back to my room where they gave me an IV drip of amino acids to further improve my body's environment, giving the fetal stem cells the best chance of doing their job. The final day of my facial was just like day one. How do you feel, Eric? You okay? Mm-hmm. Well, almost. I just have to say it, it should be me there. That was my wife and production partner who was holding the camera. She was so jealous of my facial, she wound up getting one too. And finally, it was back to my room where Dr. Irina spent a great deal of time summarizing my entire treatment program, reviewing my blood, urine, and other tests they performed, and explaining to me why they gave me the types of injections and therapy they did. Each patient undergoing therapy at MCIL has a completely different personalized therapeutic schedule depending on their current health or any more serious ailments they may have. Since I'm pretty healthy already, I underwent M-Cell's longevity anti-aging program, but others with specific ailments would receive a different protocol. I met the Kalahar family who had just arrived from Houston, Texas, whose youngest son, Beckham, underwent M-Cell's personalized treatment protocol for autism. This is Beckham's father, Matt, and his mother, Terry. While there on day three, I had the privilege to meet Dr. Alexei Karpenko, the original co-founder and partner at MSO. Um, yes, uh, you see, with autism, uh, with autism, we have uh, rather positive results. But the only thing that uh, I should warn you, this will not be most probably complete recovery. Uh, most of his function will benefit, but full recovery uh, we have not observed. We understand. We understand. We, we, we're seeking quality of life improvement. Yes. Okay. I wish you success. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Considering that autism currently strikes one in every 45 children in the United States, costing each family supporting a child with autism over the course of his or her lifetime as much as $2.4 million to care for such a diagnosis, I was quite interested in seeing how Beckham fared after fetal stem cell treatment. So, four months later, I traveled to the Kelahar's hometown of Houston, Texas to see if Beckham had made any progress.
We had a lot of aggression. Beckham would scratch me, he would bite me. Mm -hmm. So I would go to bed nightly and I would have bloody sheets. I would have scratch marks. They would be on my face, my back, wherever. I'm talking full on biting, full on scratching, full on bruising, all gone. We had no eye contact. I would try to get in his face, Beckham, Beckham, Beckham. In his world. He would just look straight past me. He'd look straight past you. It was, it, it, was, it, was it was really, really, really difficult. But yeah. the eye contact was absolutely not there, period. It, it was even more than that. When you looked in his eyes, it was almost as if you were looking in his eyes and you, were, you weren't seeing any. Nobody was home. He wouldn't mm -hmm. respond to his name. He wouldn't respond to anything. And it was pretty drastic when that happened. Almost immediately after he had his stem cell transplant, we saw changes. He had this terrible eczema everywhere, all over his skin. Within three days, it was gone. I have fought that eczema for years with prednisone, you name it. I've tried dietary changes. Mm -hmm. It was gone. His skin was clear. His eyes turned bright. All of a sudden, these smiles I had not seen in years. We started swimming. He could not swim before. He gets his head underwater. He loves it. Before his stem cell transplant, he would not walk for me. I always had to carry him. He would just block my body and refuse to walk. I couldn't walk him around the block at three. I had to have a stroller. All of a sudden he's walking. He walks now, holds my hand like a neurotypical child and we walk. We can walk in the park. I can walk with him to the grocery store, to the mall. Um, that might not seem like a big deal mm -hmm. to parents that are used to it, but for those that aren't able to have a child to walk, it's a huge deal. So the fact that I could do that made my life so much easier. So I'm not holding a 45 pound kid, 18 bags of groceries. I mean, it, it, that's, it's really miserable and difficult. So um, that was another huge thing. He's just so much more receptive to a different idea, which was not the case before. Go up. Oh, oh. there you are. Oops. He can now motor plan. If he has an idea, that was not there before. His cognitive levels have increased significantly. Okay. Ow. That's good. Ow. Go fast. Ow. Fast. Oh, go spin fast. I've definitely seen him become more flexible because he would want to do things only the way he wanted to do it and we couldn't get um, any um, change or new ideas and new ideas was really hard for us since then. He's giving me a lot more new ideas, he's doing much better with some language and he's also started to motor plan things. So the other day Terry was here, he saw this and the ramp was on the other side of the room and he went to try and get the ramp. He's never ever had a plan about how he was going to do a task. So that was very novel and very new for him. So we've definitely seen progress in lots of di different areas. <laughs> I've been working with him since he was 18 months old, so it's almost three years now. Mm -hmm. At the same time, it's also giving him the feeling of where his body is in space. So how do I learn to plan and to figure out how to do things by having a really good internal body awareness? Yeah. There you are, ready? Yeah. So every day it's something new where we're both shocked. Since the Kelahar family was making the trek to M-Cell for Beckham's autism, they decided to see if fetal stem cells would also benefit their oldest son, Matt Jr. My older son has um, convergence insufficiency and ADHD. I never thought he would make it into college. I was very skeptical, very skeptical. It's helped me tremendously with just one treatment. Uh, in terms of school, I've I've gone from middle school, I've had and then high school as well. Almost flunking, staying up till two in the morning with my parents just so they could help me because I couldn't even do it myself. Till now, I'm making straight A's and B's, uh, which is phenomenal. Um, and then I'm looking in for the the future semesters to take on a larger workload because it seems more doable, more possible. So you're saying in the four month time that you're making better grades than you ever have? Yeah. Actually, beneficial, yeah, absolutely. Without taking medication now, at least winging off a dosage, I would go from pills like Vyvanse, ADHD, um, Adderall. In these past four months, it's been tremendously helpful. 
one of the most important things he ever said to me was, Mom, thank you so much. Thank God I don't feel dumb anymore. While Matt Jr. received fetal stem cells in hopes of finding relief for his ADHD, he was also suffering from an overactive bladder and chronic skin conditions. Uh, always having these urge, I guess, urinate every 15 to 20 minutes throughout the day entirely uh, to about two months after. I haven't had the urge at all. Uh, between my skin, I've had acne, I've had uncontrollable, it was bacterial acne. Uh, I've tried the strongest things up to Accutane, as high as you could go on it, like the dosage. It would mess up my liver, it would make me feel terrible. Uh, but honestly, in the past two months, I've had skin, my skin's cleared up on my shoulders, my back, uh, mostly around my entire face. It's a tremendous difference, as well as all the eczema around the eyes mainly, and then the arms. I've had blotches around the arms, uh, where now it's completely gone, and it's just phenomenal, it's crazy. And it's only been one treatment. So we realized there was nothing that mainstream medicine had. We'd been to absolutely every doctor we possibly could. I feel like we made the right choice. We did. There's no did. doubt in my mind. We, we had a lot of information to, to sift through and like everybody else in, in seeking information and trying to be well informed, it took us literally eight months just to weed through what we thought would be the best option for us. I cannot say how thrilled I am with the results. It's one thing to have everyone around Beckham notice such great improvements after getting fetal stem cell therapy just four months prior. And it's another to review the results of his autism spectrum test, or ADOS2. We obtained these test results from Beckham's neurologist. Beckham's last ADOS2 test was in December of 2013, where he scored a 22, which fell into the moderate to severe range on the autism spectrum. However, while I was visiting the Kelahars in November of 2016, another ADOS2 test was performed, which revealed a score of 15, a 7-point reduction, showing Beckham now in the moderate autism spectrum. These results occurred after only one round of fetal stem cell therapy. Beckham has not been taking any medications during this time. I'm so excited. I can't even, it's, it's so exciting. For the it's, first time, I see the light in the end of the tunnel. I see a light. I haven't seen a light in a long time. Back in Kyiv, after my three-day treatment was complete, I spent a couple of days with Dr. Karpenko as he told me the entire story of how M-Cell came to be while showing me around Kyiv. Dr. Karpenko had worked directly in cooperation with Ukraine's Ministry of Health, allowing M-Cell to freely and legally come into existence. It was since 1991 uh, that such technology for clinical use was made and we use it uh, about 25 years, this year, 25 years already. And it is stable, we can predict what is going on, uh, pre predict the timing of results, um, understand how it will behave, our treatment will behave in different kinds of diseases, in different ages, in different conditions of the patients. So uh, this was the start of clinical use of fetal stem cell transplantation, not just a discovery of fetal stem cells for the first pioneer um, transplantation. I took a tour of M-Cell's research facilities and quality control labs. I wanted to get a fully comprehensive understanding of how these cells are harvested and tested before being administered to patients. The process begins specifically between 7 and 12 weeks of gestation, where the fetal material from a legal, voluntary abortion with the donor's consent arrives at M-Cell within two hours of the abortion procedure. This fetal material then enters M-Cell's biotechnology laboratory. This is Christina, M-Cell's CEO and overall supervisor for all of M-Cell's harvesting and quality control laboratories. Not everybody can come inside. I know. I feel very, very privileged. I would love you to see the process of the extraction of the fetal stem cells, but I'm very sorry, but we cannot film it. That's okay. That's okay. Thank you. So let's go. Yep. 
After M-cell scientists extract more than a dozen different relevant categories of fetal material in their biotechnology laboratory, the fetal stem cells are immediately sent to the cryopreservation department, where they are then suspended using a special proprietary method. Once the cells are successfully suspended, they are then simultaneously sent to three different departments. During the research phase, the cells are tested for their functional activity, viability, and consistency. They need to make sure they are using healthy and thriving cells capable of expanding and replicating once injected into the body. This viability testing process also involves a state-of-the-art laser-based flow cytometer, which is capable of analyzing, counting, and sorting the fetal stem cells in real time up to a thousand particles per second. While that is happening, this exact same batch of fetal stem cells is also being tested in M-Cell's microbiology lab, where each batch of fetal stem cells is tested to make sure they do not contain any harmful bacteria or contamination. This same batch of fetal stem cells is also sent to the polymerase chain reaction laboratory, where M-cell scientists carefully test each batch of fetal stem cells for any harmful viruses. Polymerase chain reaction is the method of molecular diagnostics that allows M-cell scientists to identify a single copy of the DNA and RNA of harmful pathogens. M-Cell's testing process is repeated three times to make absolutely certain that their fetal stem cells are up to the highest standards of viability and safety before being administered to patients. M-Cell has the largest fetal stem cell bank in the world. Quite often, people confuse fetal stem cells with embryonic stem cells when they aren't remotely the same thing. An embryonic stem cell is harvested within the first five days of development in a petri dish after artificial fertilization. Unlike fetal stem cells, embryonic stem cells haven't formed any organs or valuable tissue to take advantage of, regardless of the misleading hype in the news media. Not to mention that embryonic stem cells can be quite dangerous. The ability of embryonic stem cells to form non-cancerous tumors called teratomas is one of their defining traits. It's a frightening one, particularly for those who hope to develop therapies from these cells. In many cultures, including the Ukrainian culture, the vocabulary word for fetal simply doesn't exist which only adds to the confusion, as in some cultures, the terms fetal and embryonic are used interchangeably, hence the name M-cell. The vast power of the biological phenomenon behind harnessing fetal stem cells for therapeutic use can also be observed between a mother and child during pregnancy. Fetal cells migrate into the mother during pregnancy and can persist for decades. Fetal cells also appear to target sites of injury, crossing both the placental and blood-brain barriers. Fetal cells appear to change into whatever specific type of cell is needed, so fetal cells in a mother with liver damage could transform into liver cells. The fact that fetal stem cells have only nine months to create an entire human being should help illustrate the power of these cells in comparison to any other stem cell type. When they enter your body, they are programmed to seek out anything that needs repair, redefining the meaning of the power of Mother Nature.